Hello, I'm Jake Woodrow, civic journalist at Tell Community Television. This week, on the record, local communities and organizations receive funding. Alma Dam is awarded for its community spirit. The Department of Natural Resources and Renewables is gathering public input. But first, we speak with Robbie Anderson of Dockside Construction, a company making homes around Richmond County. Welcome to Tello. Thank you. How are you doing today, Jake? Great. Good. I guess uh, we could start um, at the beginning. Um, when and how did this uh, construction project start? Uh, we started roughly 14 months ago, um, making plans and doing the, the, the renderings and trying to figure out what it was and how we could make uh, housing affordable. Uh, we started with the province trying to work with the province. We had laid out with the province a 10 phase project um, on 18 acres of land that we own. Uh, we worked through that for a good six, seven months uh, before it just, it was evident it wasn't gonna work with the, the current policy. Uh, and then we, we transitioned into privately doing it with the help of the credit union and doing affordable housing for sale, making it uh, available to not just people in Richmond County, but across the, the island and the province. So uh, when did uh, construction start and, and where in St. Peter's is this located? Right, so we have, we have two builds happening right now. We have one in Johnstown and we have another one in River Bourgeois. Um, River Bourgeois will be pouring concrete, uh, weather permitting this Friday. And the other one was started uh, three and a half weeks ago. So we, we rolled out this initiative officially uh, about a month ago. So, so um, according to a recent Facebook post that you guys made, um, you said you're getting a ton of interest in the, these projects. There is. Uh, right now, so like I said, we got, we got two on the go. Um, we got another three in queue. And we're, we're getting calls daily right now uh, inquiring about how to get financing how to how to get land uh, that that seems to be the biggest separation at the moment is getting the land to to sell um, it, and people coming to us with land um, not but it's not uh, ready for building so there's clearing to be done and uh, utilities to get to to service it right so so um, are you able to say exactly how many applicants and bookings you're you're receiving Right now, right now we got the two on the go. We got another one in Grand Anse to do. Uh, we have another one further up towards Dundee to do. And then we have three right now going through the financing process currently. You also mentioned uh, East Coast Credit Union. Um, they're handling the financing. So um, uh, when did they get involved? And uh, how did that come about getting them involved in, so in this? So shortly after we turned away from the province and we couldn't make it work um, with the policy, we, we looked at different avenues on how can we do it privately. Um, one of the big separations is, is we needed some start out capital to get going. So uh, we wanted to try and keep it as community friendly as we could and, and keep it in and around uh, the area as much as we could suppliers and everything. So we, we started approaching different suppliers in the area um, to see if we get our costs down. And then we, we approached the credit union, Wade Beck, the director there. Uh, we had a meeting with him and we laid it out for him. We, you know, seven public floor plans right now, pricing's all on the website, and, but we laid it all out to him. This is what we want to do. We want to be able to do affordable housing for sale. It's something that's needed. Um, the ability to give homeownership to not just you know, somebody making $90,000 a year, which is kind of the current market, but home ownership to everybody, right? So we sat down with him. Uh, that, that came about really quick with them. Uh, it took, you know, three weeks to, to kind of hammer out the details with them, but, but then they came on board. And so they're, they're offering uh, through the St. Peter's location and the Lordways location, you can go in and sit down and they'll help you get approved for a mortgage. Um, and, and we can set up the meetings with the manager down there. And, and it's, yeah, it's been, it's been great. So those interested, 
would have to just go to East Coast Credit Union. They wouldn't be able to go to another financial institution. Your, your deal is, is with East Coast Credit Union. Is that, is that how that works? Or? Well, I would like, I mean, personally, I want to try and keep it in the community. But the way that we've designed these um, different than a modular home or, or a mobile home, they go on concrete. They go on a slab. Uh, it's almost like a monolithic slab. It's, but it, it gives the ability so you can mortgage it through all the big banks as well. Um, even though we would like to see the business go to the community with the credit union, um, we're not opposed or to say that we can't see you going to CIBC or RBC. Um, you can get a mortgage through anybody because they're going on concrete. So, so your company also mentioned um, that the houses are starting at around 130,000. Yep. Uh, which is less than most homes are going for now in the local market. Yep. So maybe you could explain how you arrived at that number and uh, and uh, how much less that is than what's currently available right. on the housing market. Right. So. As I mentioned, we, we approach different suppliers in the area um, to, to get our costs down. Uh, everybody has been fantastic with coming on board with this initiative. So we, we've got our costs down to, to 200 square feet to build, uh, which, which is pretty low right now in the market. Um, and, and we're going to continue to try and drive that number down as we, we get bigger and we can expand and, and get some more uh, suppliers on board, right? Um, so $130,000, it's a one bedroom, one bathroom unit. And we designed that one specifically for seniors or for a uh, young adult, a uh, single adult, right? Looking for home ownership. So it, it's nothing, it's not crazy oversized. If you remember back in the early nineties, late eighties, uh, a house was a, a standard bungalow, 1200 square feet was a family home. And then later on in the nineties, you had the custom home craze and then everything became 2,000 square feet, 2,500 square feet. And then that became the norm. But that, that's just unrealistic in the market today. It's unrealistic with where the cost of building's at, it's unrealistic where the rates are at with mortgages. So we, we took the approach of everything old's coming back into, into style now. Okay, so if we downsize, but we make them functional, open concept, we raise the ceilings to nine foot ceilings. We, we give an open floor plan to make the house feel bigger well, then we can really get our costs down. So that's what we did. We came up with $130,000 for seniors. Um, you know, we're a business where we're very transparent with our pricing. Um, you know, we're looking at a 12% profit margin on these. It's not, it's not crazy when you have to account for uh, insurances and everything else that come into it, but it, it's enough to, to make, make it affordable and, and pay our bills. So. Uh, with the $130,000, one bedroom, one bathroom, open concept, nine foot ceilings. The hallways are designed a little bit bigger for, for seniors if you're in a wheelchair or if you're, you know, mobility issues. And, and that way then uh, everybody, seniors that are looking to downsize, they can afford to get into a place and still, still keep some cash in the bank. So, so construction has started. Um, when do you anticipate it's going to be? Finished, uh, are, are you on your timeline for uh, construction? Uh, Johnstown, we're on our timeline. River Bourgeois, because of the rain, we've been pushed back. Um, that is one of the downsides to designing these the way we have with the concrete that, unfortunately, the groundwork is weather permitting. Um, it can cause some delays there. But the way that these are built, they're built off site for the most part as a kit home. So all your walls are built off site, everything's prefabricated, and then we bring it to site and erect it. So once the concrete's in the ground, it goes fairly quick. Uh, you're anywhere from a month to two months to have a house turnkey at this point. So you mentioned um, you're in uh, River Bourgeois, Johnstown, and you, you mentioned Grand Dance. Um, are you looking at other communities and w what are your plans or is it too early to, to say right now? No, we are, uh, we, we would like to say we're open for business. So. We, we can take these anywhere in the province at the moment. Um, we, we will get approval here coming up. We have a meeting next Tuesday, which will, will, will help us expand further um, with, with, I can't mention their names. Anyways, we'll, we'll help uh, 
will help us expand further out into the, the province and into the Maritimes. So, uh, you know, Arishat, Grand Anne's, anywhere in between, really. Anywhere on the island right now we can service. Um, the, again, if you come to us and you need land, we have a couple of very good realtors in, in the area that, that will help you find an affordable piece of land. I'd like to thank you uh, for taking time out of your day. I know you're certainly busy and appreciate you uh, coming and answering uh, questions today. No, no problem. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Alan Madame was among the 2024 Lieutenant Governor's Community Spirit Award winners. Four outstanding communities that demonstrate exceptional commitment to civic engagement, support for residents, and the promotion and preservation of their rich history were selected. Lieutenant Governor Arthur J. LeBlanc said he was thrilled to honor those that have gone above and beyond in promoting positive change and collective growth. LeBlanc, a native of Westershot, said he eagerly anticipates presenting the awards. Recipients must demonstrate community engagement and a forward-thinking approach to community development. In congratulating the winners, Alan McMaster, Minister of Communities, Culture, Tourism and Heritage, said the award recognizes the strength and diversity of vibrant communities and the people who live there. Almadam resident Lois Landry said working on the nomination was a labor of love, noting that the award is a reminder of the importance of community. Now there is much to be grateful for in Almadam. Landry said residents of Almadam are proud to call this little part of the province home and are grateful to share it with others. One local school was approved for funding through the new School Advisory Council Innovation Fund. Felix Marshall Education Center in Loosdale will receive funding for a rewilding green space. Announced in December, the province said the fund enables new and innovative projects to support student achievement and well-being. It provides grants of up to $10,000 to test an idea which, if shown to be successful, could be expanded to other schools. Applications were open from February 15th to April 18th, and the department said it received 128 applications. In total, more than $250,000 was awarded to 26 recipients. Two Richmond County projects are among those recently announced for age-friendly communities grant program funding. The Seniors Take Action Coalition of Richmond County was approved for $24,700 for the Richmond Community in Action Project. The coalition, which is a nonprofit charitable organization, said it is trying to create a senior center without walls, a virtual center to enhance the well-being of Richmond County seniors through a collective impact approach, cross-sector partnerships, and evidence-informed programs. Older adults in Richmond County can access much-needed resources and programs via a senior center without walls. Programs will come to their communities, as well as via telephone and online. The project involves a phased exploration, understanding, and response to community needs, fostering social connections, and addressing loneliness in an aging population. The model will be piloted, evaluated, and if successful, developed into a toolkit for other communities facing similar challenges. The Richmond River Roots American Garden Society was awarded $12,000 for a project called Richmond Nourishment for Body and Soul. This project aims to address nutritional and social challenges faced by seniors in Richmond County with a focus on combating food insecurity isolation, and promoting well-being. The initiative offers weekly meals from a community garden, coffee and tea sessions, and classes on food-related topics. The goal is to create a comfortable space for seniors to engage, share knowledge, and build social connections. Utilizing resources like a market garden, commercial kitchen, and accessible spaces, the project integrates fresh produce access, social engagement, and physical activity. The inclusive approach with donations 
aims to enhance accessibility and additional strategies. It includes community giving gardens, a seniors night out, and from a seed to pot workshop series. Social prescribing in collaboration with healthcare staff adds another dimension by prescribing activities like gardening workshops for improved health and well-being. Upgrades are coming to pedestrian infrastructure in Port Hawkesbury. On July 15th, the provincial government announced a project that includes 1.44 kilometers of sidewalk replacement and widening, an accessible pedestrian ramp design, tactile walking surface indicators, the addition of rest areas and benches, and sign improvements. Production Mayor Brenda Chisholm Beaton said the town's accessibility plan, a town for everyone, states it is important that the community be as inclusive and barrier free as possible. The mayor said that one of the most prominent issues raised through community consultation while building the plan is the condition of sidewalks and the necessary upgrades required to ensure barrier free access. Total funding for the work is $796,454 with the province and the town each investing $398,227. The public is being asked to provide input on 16 proposed new or expanded wilderness areas and nature reserves in Nova Scotia. The Department of Environment and Climate Change launched an online survey on July 19th and public input will be accepted until September 20th. The proposed new designations include 255 hectares of the Forshoe Coast Wilderness Area in Richmond and Cape Breton counties. Bonnie Sutherland, Executive Director of Nova Scotia Nature Trust, said with over 70% of Nova Scotia land privately owned and biodiversity concentrated on these lands, the Trust is delighted that the province is advancing private land conservation. Currently, 13.6% of Nova Scotia's land and water is protected, the provincial government said, noting that these proposed sites were private land acquired through a five-year agreement with the Government of Canada with the goal to protect more land and water. Timothy Hallman, Minister of Environment and Climate Change, said his government is committed to protecting 20% of Nova Scotia's land, water, and wetlands by 2030. Thank you for watching. Please tune in again to find out what we will be talking about on the record.